philosophy major from Minneapolis coming to you from Bates College. And I'm Nathaniel, a sophomore sociology major originally from New Jersey, and we're your hosts of this episode on Crop and Click, considering truth, objectivity, and politics in documentary photography. Crop and Click is a series of podcasts produced in collaboration with Professor Aaron Nolan's documentary photography class and the Bates College Museum of Art. All of the following images discussed in our podcast can be found on the Bates College Museum of Art podcast website. Today we're going to engage with the Farm Security Administration's photographic collection, specifically investigating the work of Walker Evans through his photograph, Store with False Front, vicinity of Selma, Alabama. In looking at Evans' work, we will examine the truths and falsehoods that Evans' photograph tells us about the people and places he photographed during the, his time at the FSA in the 1930s. From here, we will compare and contrast it with another FSA photograph taken by Arthur Rothstein entitled Sign, Birmingham, Alabama. Nora, what are some key themes we can expect to take away from today's episode? That's a great question, Nathaniel. Thanks. Um, in this episode, we are going to discuss the FSA's goals and objectives the relationship between a photographer and his subjects, and the aestheticization of poverty and labor. Also, a question that we will be revisiting throughout this episode is what does it mean to capture America for Americans? Let's begin with a discussion of the FSA and its motives. What do you think, Nathaniel? Let's do it. All right. Uh, President Roosevelt, along with Rexford Tugwell, first formed the Resettlement Administration in 1935. They then hired Roy Stryker and the photographers that comprised the FSA. The Resettlement Administration formally became the FSA two years later in 1937. Mm. It's funny, It's two years can make such a difference. Yeah, but for sure. When this transition occurred, the new goal of the FSA became to aid poor farmers, sharecroppers, tenant farmers, and migrant workers. The FSA was actually one of the New Deal's most progressive and controversial agencies. It advocated government planning and economic intervention to improve living conditions in rural America. Yeah, totally. And to defend and promote the FSA, Director Rexford Tugwell created a publicity department to document rural poverty and government efforts to alleviate it, which included a photographic unit. Tugwell chose Roy Stryker, a college economics instructor, to run it. Although Stryker was not a photographer himself, he formed and directed a group of 11 photographers of which Walker Evans was a part. Hmm. Nora, I'm, I'm curious, what did Stryker wish to see from the FSA photographic team? That's a really good question. Stryker believed that the purpose of the FSA photographs was to provide a broad visual record of American society and help make the American public aware of the poor working and living conditions in the rural South and across the Midwest. In other words, he hoped that the photographers he hired could capture America for Americans. Wow, it's fascinating. It seems like such a charged goal. What did Stryker believe the camera's role was in accomplishing this mission to capture America for Americans? That's also a really good question. Um, Well, Stryker also believed that the photographs produced under his direction could provide a, quote, documentary and completely objective view of American life. End quote. But he did not think about how the FSA's mission could influence the production of these photographs. He argued that they were, quote, accurate, truthful, unmanipulated slices of real life, end quote. Wow. But in his commitment to capturing purely documentary photographs, Stryker ignored the clear influence and role of a government agency as the actor behind the camera, ignoring the propagandist aspect of the FSA mission. It's fascinating. Is this really what ended up happening? Well, not quite. As we dive into the works of the FSA, we will analyze Stryker's beliefs and discover that his belief that the FSA photos were completely objective is far from the truth. Before we get there, let's take a closer look at Store with False Front. In order to grapple with this image's truth value and understand its participation in larger conversations about politics and visibility, we must first observe the photograph and see what evidence included inside the frame. So, Nathaniel, when you look at this iconic Walker Evans photograph, what do you see? Well, a lot. But to start, Store with False Front is a photograph taken by Walker Evans in 1936. It was originally printed on silver nitrate on an 8 by 10 inch or smaller print. 
The image features a decrepit building made up of various materials, including wood and metal. Old signs and posters, wrinkled and ripped, are scattered throughout the walls and doors. The building sits nearly alone, there is another small building off to its left, and is surrounded by a vast agricultural landscape in the background. Evans does not provide a centered or full frontal view of the building, instead we also see the road in front of it, suggesting that we are merely passing by. Three figures stand in the porch shadows, hardly visible to the viewer. Even though some aspects of, the pre of their presence are visible, they look like less like people and more like undefinable silhouettes. What do you mean by that, Nathaniel? Even though photos are supposed to reflect reality, we do not get a realistic depiction of the subjects in the photo. Although the man in the hat is looking at the camera, we cannot see his face due to the dark shadow looming over him. Because of this, we know nothing about who he is and have a harder time connecting with him. This creates a disconnect between the viewer and the subjects in the photo. Okay, yeah, I can totally see that too, and I agree. Um, one could even argue that there is a disconnect in many photographs in the FSA collection, including Dorothea Lange's canonical Migrant Mother. What do you think, Nathaniel? Absolutely, Nora. I think the famous close-up pho photograph of the poor migrant worker, Florence Owens Thompson, does not give much information about who she actually is. Instead, the photograph reduces Thompson's existence to her role as a mother and a laborer through an impersonal title. Yeah, completely. And I also think it's important to note that it wasn't until 1978, 32 years after the photograph was taken, that Thompson's identity was revealed and the public learned her name. Wow, I didn't know that. I'm, I'm curious, how can we understand Evan's unwillingness to humanize his subjects and how this impacts his photograph's documentary value? That's a great question, Nathaniel. I think it can be best summed up in a word Paulo Rabinowitz uses, voyeurism. What is voyeurism, Nora? Well, voyeurism is the practice of taking pictures of people without them knowing, both literally and metaphorically. Evans practices voyeurism by encroaching into the lives of Southern Americans, whose identities he did not care to know and name. As we investigate Zorth Falls Run, it is important to understand that Evans' position on the road implies an a certain impermanence of his presence and relation to the subjects in the photo. From this impermanence, we can understand that Evans is an intruder in this space, an intrusion that is by nature voyeuristic. There is no clear acknowledgement of his presence by any of the individuals in the photo. Huh, interesting. It reminds me of something James Curtis and Sheila Grannon discussed. They found that in many cases, Evans did not seek cooperation or permission from his subjects. In fact, in some of his photographs, his subjects' actions appear, quote, as blurred images in the final picture, end quote, illustrating their unwillingness to be photographed. They write, quote, the alternative, of course, was to ask the public to halt its normal activity for a few moments to pose for the camera. A number of Evans' street scenes are so arranged, end quote. Nora, I'm curious about how we can understand Evans' relationship to his subjects in the context of the politics of the FSA. That's a really good question. Evans wanted to convey a specific message about the rural South by aestheticizing workers' impoverished living conditions. As Winford Fluck explains, many of Evans' photographs were in fact staged. Fluck quotes Curtis and Grannon, quote, the persons pictured in them were asked to take certain positions and poses. Photographers skillfully use formal devices such as light and dark contrast and could be very selective in their choice of objects and pictorial frames, end quote. To achieve a desired effect, Evans frequently posed his subjects. To return to store with false front, we know Evans did not pose the subjects in this image because he simply did not seek cooperation from them. However, he uses light, light and dark to contrast and illuminate the storefront and conceal the subjects. This allows the viewer to focus on the conditions of the storefront while ignoring the people in the photograph. Absolutely. I remember reading something Fluck wrote where he describes how documentary images can be manipulated to achieve a certain effect. Quote, in documenting reality, reality is visually reconstructed and given a particular meaning designed to have an effect on the viewer. In other words, at a closer look, the apparent authenticity of FSA photography is the result of an artfully constructed authenticity effect, end quote. As with Store with False Front, Evans artfully constructed his camera angle and lighting to illuminate the lifeless condition of the storefront. Hmm, interesting. I noticed while the agricultural background with empty fields and a lack of crops and livestock is not the focal point of the photograph, it furthers the lifeless image Evans is trying to convey. 
Along with the mission of the FSA and the New Deal, he wanted to show that the conditions of the storefront and agricultural landscape could be improved. Therefore, the, quote, authenticity of Evans' documentary photos were heavily defined by the politics of the FSA and the New Deal. Yeah, totally. That's a great point, Nathaniel. Um, How does this then challenge and put into question the documentary value of Evans' work? It's a great question. If these so-called documents portraying objective reality are in fact staged and posed, how do we then understand their value in capturing America? Simply, the citizens, farmers, store owners, and patrons suddenly become models in Evans' artistic endeavor. Evans is no longer capturing reality, but creating it. A reality that aligns with not only his artistic vision, but also the political mission of the FSA. Earlier, we talked about Dorothea Lange's work. Are there other FSA photographers that engaged in this politicized practice of infusing their political and social motives into FSA photographs? Absolutely. Another great example, and one that comes to mind, is Arthur Rothstein's sign Birmingham, Alabama. Was Rothstein also part of the FSA? (laughs) Yes, he was. Thank you for reminding me. Going back to the image, however, in the foreground stands a billboard featuring a white nuclear family driving down a road in a pristine new car. The drawing of the family is accompanied by the phrase, quote, there is no way like the American way, end quote. Above both the drawing and the caption stands a header that reads again, and I'm quoting, the world's highest standard of living. The billboard bisects the photograph, occupying the left side of the image, while on the right in the background, Rossing captures two old, unkept structures in the city of Birmingham, Alabama. Nora, how can you relate this image to the work of Walker Evans? That's a good question. Thanks for asking. Well, this image not only adds to the narrative of the South that Evans created in the 1930s as a desolate, abandoned region riddled with poverty, it also intrinsically identifies the, quote, American way as a dream only for the white middle class. Black people were excluded from this American dream through the racialized system of segregation in Alabama that the Jim Crow laws helped maintain. Wow, yeah. It's interesting to see that history through photographs. How do we then understand this image as it aligns with the FSA's mission to, quote, capture America for Americans? Well, it's clear that both Rothstein and the FSA imagined America as a picturesque place designed for a white, middle-class, heteronormative, nuclear family. This value aligned with many of the political and sociological beliefs of the time that excluded people of color and queer communities. It's a great point. If Rothstein signed Birmingham, Alabama is and captures America, it is only an America for the white nuclear family in the car and everyone that looks like them. Nathaniel, how can we understand Evans' work in a larger context? How have his practices shaped the history of documentary photography, especially in the United States? It's a great question, Nora. It's something Grace Hale discusses. The practice of Evans and the other FSA photographers, and I'm quoting Hale here, shaped a documentary practice that dominated American photography for decades. She adds sharp black and white photographs of poor people, rural places, and vernacular architecture produced a set of codes about what counted as real that retained its power through the second half of the 20th century. End quote. Wait, what does she mean by, quote, real? Well, as we've discussed, these photographs existed within a perceived objectivity. Because the photographs reduced the subjects and places to poverty, this narrative was internalized by the American public. As Hale puts it, quote, These places became de facto open-air museums where poverty, vernacular culture, and a material sense of the past in the present seemed to be permanently on display, end quote. These places, as Hale described, became synonymous with antiquity, juxtaposing them to northern cities that were seen as hubs of culture and modernity. Yeah, and I want to add that it is important to remember that the FSA photographs were propaganda from the politics of the time. Mm. These photos were serving quote, to provoke, persuade, entertain the public, end quote. We see this in store with False Front through the emphasis on the building that seems decrepit and unkept. But even though the photograph is stark and almost lifeless, the title suggests an interesting dichotomy. It suggests that there's more to the building than what meets the eye, and the viewer is instilled with hope that the conditions can improve. 
As Curtis and Grannon explain, quote, the FSA images describe hope as well as despair, plenty as well as scarcity, well-being as well as suffering, end quote. Yeah, absolutely. And photographs like Evans were supposed to depict the hardships of reality in the 1930s following the stock market crash, dust bowl, and drought, while simultaneously giving the viewer hope and at times a call to action. Now that we've discussed and hopefully digested the politics behind the Farm Security Administration's work and the work of Walker Evans, we want to end our podcast with a question photo historians continuously grapple with. As we wrap up our episode here today, Nathaniel, how can we assess the truth value of the so-called documentary photograph? Well, we know that FSA photographers like Evans and Rothstein carefully cropped and framed their photographs to suit their personal and political needs. In capturing the American South during the Great Depression, Evans aestheticized the tragedy and despair of human life. Yeah, 100%. And in doing so, Evans relegated his subjects to symbols of poverty, stripping their humanity and sovereignty from them. Simply put, we can't take these photographs as objective truths. We must remember that they are infused with social and political meaning. Photographers like Evans employed artistic conventions to aestheticize their subject matter. As we have shown throughout our analysis, photographs, especially those considered documentary, do not exist without context. We hope you enjoyed this investigation of Walker Evans and the Farm Security Administration. Thank you for listening and have a good day. Thanks so much.